Hello, everybody. I'm Pastor Steve, and we're back here in the book of Job. We're going to start in chapter 40 today. But before we start, we're going to back up a step and just say where we were, because this is the, the situation where the Lord is now confronting Job. After all these chapters, and we went through weeks of it, of Job and his friends arguing amongst each other. The Lord has entered the picture and he is uh, making a few comments. And if you recall the last time we were together, the Lord asked Job, you know, about the oceans, about the skies, about the stars. Then he went down and said, well, that, that might be a little difficult. Let me ask you things you might know something about. The donkeys, the ox, the wild ox. The, he even asked about the ostrich and a horse. Do you know how, know how that works, Job? And Job couldn't answer him. Then he talked about the hawk and he talked about the eagle and Job still couldn't respond. So now in chapter 40, I, was, I finished up last week or the last time we were together and the Lord said, do you still want to argue with the almighty Job? He says, you are God's critic, but do you have any answers? And this is where we're going to start in chapter 40, verse 4. And so Job um, responds to the Lord, and then Job replied to the Lord, as it starts, he says, am I nothing? How could I ever find the answers? I will cover my mouth. He says, I'm going to just stop talking. Cover my mouth. I have said way too much already. I have nothing more to say, Lord. And then the Lord challenges Job again. He says to him, are you as strong as God, Job? Can you thunder with a voice like his? Give vent to your anger. Let it overflow against the proud. Humiliate the proud with a glance. Walk on the wicked where they stand. Bury them in the dust. Imprison them in the world of the dead. Then even I would praise you, Job, if you could do those things for your own strength would save you. Then he goes on to talk about a creature called the behemoth. Behemoth, I hope I'm saying that right. But he's saying, take a look at the behemoth, which I made just as I made you. And he's bringing up these points. He says the behemoth is a prime example of God's handiwork. And only its creator can threaten it. The behemoth is strong, it's powerful, it has no enemies. And he says, and the Lord is saying to Job, only I can control the behemoth because I created it. And he goes on, he says, no one can catch it off guard or put a ring in his nose or lead it away. Then he goes into chapter 41. So the Lord is talking about how he is really all powerful. Job, you are, remember, and I've said this before, the Lord's ways are so much higher than man's ways. The Lord's thoughts are so much higher than man's thoughts. And right now, he is talking to Job, the Lord is talking to Job and saying to him, you have nothing to offer me because I control all of these things and you don't. You are a mere man. So then he goes out and brings up this creature called the Leviathan. The Leviathan, he says, if you lay a hand on it, you will certainly remember the, the battle that follows. You won't try that again. No, it is useless to try to capture it. Who has given me anything I need to pay back? Even under heaven, even everything under heaven is mine. Let me re repeat that. The Lord is saying to Job, the Leviathan, it's a huge water creature, and it's not in our age. It's not even in Job's age, I don't think. It is, and they're not sure what it is. Is it a huge alligator? Is it a sea monster? It's been referred to several times in the Bible. And as a creature of the sea, it's a monster of the sea. It's like a sea dragon, a fire-breathing dragon, things that never existed. But whatever it was, it, would, it is to relate to Job that it is all-powerful and you aren't going to create it. But God is saying, I can keep it under control. I can hold it back. I created it, and I can control it. So Job, can you control Leviathan? And Job is, has no answer, but no. 
He says, no. Let me read this. He says, who has given me anything that I need to pay back? Everything under heaven is mine. God says, I created it. It's all mine. Job, you understand who you're dealing with and what you're dealing with. And I do not have to answer to you, but I am because I'm with you. What you said, I want the Lord to be with me. I do not want to be forsaken by the Lord. And the Lord has not forsaken Job. He has put Job on a pedestal, as I've said before, that he is a righteous, upstanding man. And he's showing us that this is all about, to Satan, the goodness of Job. Let me see now. The tremendous strength of the Leviathan neck strikes terror among wherever it goes. And when it rises, the Almighty... When it rises, the Almighty are the, when it rises, the mighty are afraid and gripped in terror. No sword can stop it. No spear or dart or javelin. No iron is nothing but straw to the to the creature. Nothing on earth is its equal, and no other creature so fearless of all creatures in the. It is the proudest. It is the king of all beasts. So uh, the point to be made here is that there are things out there that Job has no control over, but the Lord has control over everything because everything in the world is his. He has created it, and he has control over it, and that's just as simple as that. Now, Job, are you done with me yet? He's, so he goes into chapter 42, and we're going to finish up the, in six verses here. In chapter 42, then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. Job is kind of learning his place. I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. You ask, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? It is I. And I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Job is becoming a little bit humble now. Things far too wonderful for me. You said, listen, and I will speak. I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. The Lord says, Job is saying, remember, Lord, you said, listen, and I will speak. I have some questions for you, and I will answer them. He says, I had only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. I take back everything I said, and I sit in the dust and the ashes to show my repentance. Job is saying, Lord, I understand. If you, I'm vexed. I'm sorry. I didn't know what I was saying. I was hurt. I was discouraged. I had my friends beating up on me. And I just said, I wanted to be with you. I wanted to know your presence was there. And the Lord did not abandon him. But the Lord did remove his consciousness of the Lord's presence. He felt alone, even though the Lord was with him. And that would be a terrible place to be. But now the Lord is saying to him, we're going to straighten this all out, Job, and you're going to come out okay. But right now, I want you to know that you are my man. I love you, and I will take care of you. As I said, my son said, I'll never leave, never leave you or forsake you. And today is that day. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. And we have a lot to learn by just what has happened here. And we're going to conclude this next week, and we're going to start with verse 7 of chapter 42, the last chapter of Job, and we're going to have this thing completed. So with that in mind, I'm going to finish this with a short prayer and say, Heavenly Father, we humble ourselves before you this day, and we thank you for your wisdom, for the fact that you have taught us how to pray, how to stand up, and how to listen to your word. Father, we know that you are all-powerful. You created all things, and it is in our consciousness to just accept you and everything you do. We, we just accept it in how Job demonstrated, but he surrendered by saying, no more. He covered his mouth and said, I surrender to you, Lord, and that's where we are. So thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.